Our arrival was completely unannounced and initially the mood among the local people seemed fairly agreeable. They'd been caught napping, literally. When we'd entered the town at dawn, a truck of fighters had just slowly cruised towards us. The blokes inside, dressed in black robes with only their eyes showing through their headdresses, waved and seemed to smile. But I knew their AK-47s were in there too, stashed out of sight. Their leader made an obviously flimsy offer of cooperation. It was bollocks, and we knew it. Once we'd kicked in a few doors and moved through one or two buildings, where we found stashes of guns, ammo and drugs, the mood turned nasty. An hour or so after we'd returned to our makeshift camp, a few miles away, a loud hailer echoed instructions through the streets. Our interpreter relayed the highlights back to us. This will not happen again, yelled the voice. We will engage the enemy when they come back. A fight was coming. Our work on that mission followed a familiar routine. During the evening we usually grabbed an hour or two of kip under the stars at our base, having smashed into some known enemy positions that were located in the mountains nearby during the day, we made a series of routine patrols through the town to get a feel for the place. Our adrenaline peaked and swooped with the action. Given that we were at the tail end of a six month tour of duty where we'd been running missions pretty much every night, I was already at my physical limits. Sprinting around under the hot sun while carrying a backpack of heavy equipment and weaponry had taken its toll. Emotionally I'd become a little frazzled too. The stress of entering buildings unannounced and scanning the shadowy corners of dingy houses for gunmen and bomb makers while looking out for the safety of innocent civilians and screaming kids had yanked at my nerves. When the battle eventually came, it was ugly. We had returned to the town the following morning for another series of door-to-door -door searches, but a different atmosphere had seeped into the disorientating alleyways and thoroughfares. As promised, there was a noticeably more hostile vibe and way too much activity for my liking. People watched us closely wherever we walked. A group of lads on motorbikes zipped through the streets, constantly checking on our progress, but this time their AK-47s were in view. It felt as if the first shot was only a heartbeat away, until finally, at noon, I heard the unmistakable surge of bloody violence. But 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 Somebody was firing on the other side of the outpost. My earpiece crackled. There was a shout. Contact north of the village. More shouting came through on the squadron's comms network. We've got a casualty. We need to host the rendezvous point. I heard panting, the sound of soldiers running. Yeah, there's two motorbikes moving around with shooters, shouted the voice. Foxy, we're coming to where you are. You'll see us in five minutes. Scanning the streets ahead for approaching gunmen, our unit took cover. A few local soldiers, trained military personnel who were working alongside us, jumped behind the nearest wall. Others ran into a doorway. The buzz of roaring motorbikes and firing AK-47s was drawing closer and my heart rate quickened as the oncoming gunfight played out over the comms. I'd found that one of the funniest things about war, or any horrendous situation I'd be faced with, those fast-moving life-or-death moments, was that the hearing, the imagining of death or horrific injury on the radio was often far scarier than any act of violence I might have witnessed with my own eyes. An operator on the peripheries of a battle listening to the screaming and shouting through their earpiece could be more rattled than those lads firing in the thick of the action. I've heard it's the same for medics working in a frantic NE situation. Doctors learning about a mass casualty event can be traumatised just by the anticipation of what they're about to see. Emotionally, they end up in a much worse place than responders helping any badly wounded victims at the scene itself. Without visual contact, there's no context. The mind makes shit up and any imagined story is far worse than the reality. There was no doubt from the yelling in my earpiece that a nasty fight was kicking off, but I had very little idea how the engagement was taking shape, or its speed and scale. God knows how many people were shooting at us, or from where. I later learned that a group of enemy commanders had hidden themselves on a nearby hill. From above our position, they were orchestrating the chaos with binoculars and walkie-talkies. One of them must have spotted my unit because a truck of gunmen suddenly turned...